here we are. Okay, everyone. Wow, that was amazing. I, I have so many things to say, I don't even know where to start. I, I absolutely loved the three presentation. I love Matt's view with the pyramid. I thought that was brilliant. Just, just one small note, Matt, for that. I mean, Matt comes from Microsoft, which is a big company. I come from startups. So our view is that you build the PowerPoint first and then you go and build technology, not the other way around. But, you know, I guess, I guess that way can also work, uh, you know, if you're into that. And, and Darren, don't, me, don't even get me started on coffee, okay? Let's, let's, let's save some time for some cyber talk. So, with that in mind, the next session is going to be about cyber from the trenches. Here in Israel, because of our mandatory military service, we like to draw parallels from the world of military. And that's how we came up with the name for this session. Now, as uh, the saying goes, there are no atheists in the foxholes. We all know that when you're there, when it's happening, and, and, and tomorrow we're going to have a talk from the former VP of uh, security at Sony, who was the VP of security at Sony Entertainment at the time it was hacked. So, so you guys are going to get a lot of information about uh, actual case studies, actual things that have happened to companies, how we can learn from that, how we can grow from that. My favorite quote in that perspective it's from uh, Warren Buffett. And, uh, and, that, and I think that really captures the essence of what each and every one of us feels in our job where we've always learned the most important lesson that we need to learn one second after we actually needed that knowledge, right? So to try and unbalance this equation, to try and get us to the point where we're one step ahead of the game, we're going to have a whole session dedicated to learning from people who have been there, done that, and hopefully can share with us some insights on how we can all do better. To promote this idea, <clears throat> I would like to invite the next moderator on stage. Uh, her name is Karen El Azari, I'm sure all of you know her. Karen and I go back many, many years, and Karen has a tradition. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Karen and I have spoken together at many conferences over the years, and traditionally, always Karen appeared before I did. So she always came up on stage, gave her talk, went down, and then it was my turn. And she would always steal my slides. She would always take my ideas and present them first and do it in a better way than I was going to do it, and then I would get on stage and be like, okay, so... I really have nothing left to talk about. So hopefully, Karen, I managed to steal one of your slides today and get back at you. So please help me uh, by welcoming Karen el an analyst, author, and researcher here at the Balvatnik ICRC in Tel Aviv University. Thank you, Matan. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Matan. Hi, uh, hello everybody. This is our ninth year for Cyber Week, and I've been a part of this event for so many years. It's always exciting for me to see the amazing international audience that comes all the way to my beautiful hometown, sunny Tel Aviv. So welcome everybody. I'm very excited to share with you some of the great ideas that we have about the, the, real, the realities of cyber warfare in the trenches, as you heard. So what does that mean? Well, first, I actually have a secret to share with you. From my personal point of view, cybersecurity these days is simply no longer about secrets. In fact, many of us don't have that many secrets to keep. I can even steal Matan's slides ahead of his presentation, apparently. But the reality is that while for many years we called our profession information security, Nowadays, it is not just information that we must protect. In fact, the realities of cybersecurity is how can we protect people's trust in our digital way of life? How can we make sure that when people come to their doctor's office for an appointment, they trust the digital systems there? Or, that a, or perhaps that a ransomware attack does not disrupt a, a train station? That's the reality, and therefore the boundaries between military cyber warfare and everyday life for everyday people have been blurred. And to understand how that matters to each and every one of us, I invited, and we invited this year, some amazing speakers to shed light on how the truth of cybersecurity in the trenches is that there's no front line of fierce cyber warriors protecti protecting us on the trenches. In fact, it is us who are standing on those front lines. It is us, each and every one of us, both as security practitioners, but also as individuals, whether it's at home, where some of us have to become the chief security officer for the dozens of digital devices that we have with us. In fact, with a hand on your heart, 
Take a moment to think about it. What do you have at home? More digital devices or family members and pets? Chances are that you have more digital devices. And when's the last time that you uploaded a new firmware on any of those devices? When's the last time that you reset a default password? All of us have now become the guardians of our own environments, at home and, of course, at work. So to further understand how we can re deal with those problems, it's also important for me to share my personal point of view, which is that we don't have to fight this war alone. In fact, our best allies might be the people who scare us. They might be the hackers whose hair looks a little bit funny, or maybe they have a blue beard. Perhaps they come from another part of the world, and we are often scared and terrified but by what hackers can do. The reality, and what I believe in, is that hackers can help us. That's why five years ago I shared my idea that hackers can sometimes actually be the immune system for our new digital age. Many people have resonated with that message, and to further understand how we can work with hackers, Four years ago, we brought hackers here to Tel Aviv. We started an event called Besides Tel Aviv, which is the, yes, indeed, it is the largest hacker community event here in Israel. How many here have participated in Besides Tel Aviv yesterday? Quite a few of you. For those of you who haven't, did you realize that just steps away from this beautiful building, a community of hundreds of friendly hackers gathered to talk about the biggest problems in the world and how they can break things in order to fix them. To further understand this concept of breaking things in order to fix them and why that hacker mindset is so important, I want to invite somebody who does not wear a hoodie. I want to invite a very special individual, a person who has worked on one of the most successful television shows depicting hackers, Mr. Robot. If you've seen that show, you know why it is consistently awarded as one of the most technically accurate shows about cybersecurity. That's because they work with brilliant advisors like our next speaker. He is not only an advisor to this television show, he has also hacked more devices than you can imagine, including Elon Musk's personal Tesla. That's right. He works on a variety of topics. He is the head of security for DEF CON, the world's largest convention of hackers. Just imagine the challenges protecting a conference of 30,000 hackers. All this and more from the brilliant individual, our next guest. Please help me welcome to the stage Mark Rogers. Please. Mark is the Vice President of Cybersecurity for Okta, a technical advisor for Mr. Robot, as I mentioned, and personally, an individual that I am inspired by and I'm very happy that he joined us here in Tel Aviv. Rock the stage, Mark. Woo. Thank you for those incredibly kind words, Karen. Um, I have to say it's an immense honor to be here because I'm always blown away by the technology and people and innovation that comes out of Israel. And I think actually in many ways, a lot of countries have a lot to learn from the way Israel does cybersecurity. The other thing is I bet when Karen gave this uh, introduction, the last thing you expected to see on stage... Hey, I'm not good. Mark, just hold it a little bit closer. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I heard you called my name, so I came out. Sure. Yeah, hold I it bet, a little closer. I Thank bet you. the last thing you expected to see on stage was someone looking like me. Because we aren't all blue-haired, skateboarding, crazy kids. I mean, maybe we were a little bit younger, but um, we come in all shapes and sizes. And we aren't your enemy. We're just people who have a particular set of skills and who really love what we do. The challenge is, it's very hard to find some way to express that and do it. I started in the 80s, and when I started, hacking was just a hobby. It was, why is that weird kid playing with computers? A few years later, it was, you're one of those evil guys who breaks into computers. And it gradually went and on from there. If you look at what a lot of the media says about hackers, there's a lot of fear. I left my own country, the UK, to move to the US because I couldn't get good jobs in the UK because of the fear of hackers. In the US, on the other hand, because of the work of people like The Loft, 
who testified in front of the Senate, that changed. And that gave me the opportunity. And now I've been a CISO in many countries. I was the head of security for Cloudflare for four years. I was a CISO in South Korea. I was a CISO for three months in a startup uh, last year until it got bought. Uh, and now I'm an Okta. So we are actually professionals as well. The trick is to find us, to engage us, and to give us the opportunity to do things. Now, how do you find hackers who are going to be useful? It's actually not that hard. The vast majority of my community want to do good. If you come to DEF CON, you will see that, just talking to people. These are inquisitive kids who are doing stuff because they find it fascinating, because they want to do more. And if you engage them and you give them things to do, they will do it. But, you know, there are challenges. The world is changing. A lot of the things that we perceived as threats are now changing into different things. And a lot of the things that we perceived as not threats are really big threats. For years, anything that was classified as an informational bug, you know, something that would uh, give out a piece of information or let you put up something on a screen, like a, a message that says something rude, not much of a problem, right? Nine times out of ten, it gets put into JIRA and marked as won't fix. But consider this. If you take a bug like that now and you push it out to every single airplane in a country with a countdown timer, do you think those airplanes are going to take off? Simple things like that can now cause immense critical impact. And we have to rethink how we do that. And the way to do that is the hacker mindset. And that comes on to the next thing. It's not just hiring hackers we need to do. What we need to do is get everybody to start thinking like hackers. Get the hacker mindset. And I don't mean become super technical people who can sit in front of computers and do amazing things. That would be cool. But I mean thinking outside the box, looking at things and thinking, hey, if I do this, what could it do down the line? The original definition of hacker was from the MIT. And in fact, it was from the, the Model Railway Club in MIT in the 70s. And what it meant was somebody who took a system, modified it to do something else without destroying that system. I believe that is the true meaning of hacker. And I believe that is where hackers can be useful. That line of thinking is what businesses need. At the end of the day, security should not be a blocker. It should be an accelerator. Just to finish, the, the last thing, why do cars have brakes? Most people say to stop. It's to give control. When they put brakes into cars, there was an exponential increase in the speed that cars were able to attain because of the confidence that that uh, underlying security control gave. Hackers can help fix things. We need to mobilize our citizens and turn them into the army that will protect our nations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. That was incredible. And we're so happy to have you here with us. And we will continue our amazing conversations further on. But I want to tell you one more thing about Mark. Please, let's, let's face the audience. I want to tell you one more thing. Mark did something special this time coming to Tel Aviv. He also brought his young daughter with him. And I think it's remarkable because we really need that type of parent that inspires their children to learn about cybersecurity. So let's give it up one more time for Mark Rogers and his daughter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Microphone, Microphone, please, for Mark. Please look me up. You'll find me on the internet. There's a lot of stuff on there. Don't believe all of it. Um, ask me any questions. I want to help all of you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Please, this way. Thank you.